Hi guys, welcome back to Inspirations, my podcast dedicated to knitting and yarn dyeing. So my name is Christelle. Um, I'm in an indie dyer. I live in France, uh, near Paris. And if you are new to the podcast, thank you so much. So uh, I have an Etsy shop in which I sell my hand dyed yarns and some knitting accessories. The shop is updated once a week on Monday afternoons uh, and it goes hand in hand with the newsletter that is sent out every Monday at 5 p.m. And there is a weekly podcast um, that's uploaded on YouTube every Monday at 5 p.m. PM as well, uh, pa everything Paris time. So if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much. I hope you're doing quite, uh, quite well. And uh, it's always a pleasure to uh, be back for you for, with, with you for another episode. Uh, I wanted to thank very much some of you who were uh, kind enough to help me with English when I had my doubts. So thank you so much. Um, I know now that it's hats off and hands down, <laughs> not the other way around. Uh, so thank you so much. Okay, so for today's episode, um, I wanted to touch base very quickly on several matters, um, several subjects, actually. Uh, it's not going to be an, a long episode today because uh, I'm in between two fiber festivals, so I always want to take some time just to chat a bit with you guys. Uh, but uh, to be completely honest, I didn't have much time to you know, prepare content uh, as much as I would like. Still, I have things to share with you <laughs> that I want to, to show you. Um, the first one is a quick, quick look at... Uh, it's an avant-première look, actually, at the uh, November uh, colorway for the Sacknitters Almanac, so I will show you that in a minute. I will show you to my uh, Kutu of Shallography, the um, latest and ongoing uh, mystery call by Stephen West. Uh, I just wanted to share a few words about the um, fiber show I'm going to attend at the end of the month. I'm super excited about that. Uh, that's three and Four, I just have the tiny beginnings of a gnome that I want to share with you. Uh, but before we, d we dive into all that, I just wanted to let you know that there is an ongoing uh, cal, uh, which is the FO Fanfare. It renews every month and you can play along uh, for October until October the, 30 the 31st. You can play uh, on, Ravelry with, uh, on Instagram sorry, with this hashtag or on Ravelry and or on Ravelry and to enter you have to post a picture of your tricot and stitch project it can be yarn related it can be pattern related it can be both um, yeah and so the winners for uh, the FO Fanfares of September and October will be announced in November also uh, there's a car that ended end of September that's the car Jimmy and I'm going to announce winners for this one uh, in November as well. Once, you know, all the hectic things have passed because there is this uh, up and coming, very cool fiber festival. And then there are the advent calendars. And once I'm done with all that, I'm going to catch up with the winners of the different cows. OK, um, also, there is another one, another cow going on right now. It's the Cal for the Show Reconfort. So this is open until December 31st. And there will be kits uh, in the shop for that uh, mid-November. But I, again, I'll give you more info uh, closer to the date, to the date for that. So, Almanac of the, the Sacknitters Almanac for November. So what I want to share with you is share just a glimpse of the, of the, of the colorway. I will um, share more details about it when it's in the shop uh, and that will be November 8th. Uh, I changed the, I moved the dates a bit for the shop updates because, um, you know, I've had this big fiber festival at the beginning of the month and just had a reality check about what it means, what it entails to just, you know, drive back from a uh, faraway um, fiber show uh, that is spread 
uh, on several days um, and so I know I, I know that I won't be able to um, post a podcast on November 1st um, put the November colorway of the of the almanac on November 1st I will be driving back from the fiber festival and I will need some time to rest because it's completely exhausting I mean it's completely crazy good and, and insanely happy times for me but it's absolutely draining as well and I know I will have time I will need time just to you know process all the emotions and <laughs> all the good and all the fun and just you know uh, climb down and, uh, and, and and be back to normal life so I will need time for that <laughs> so yeah uh, shop update for the second dozen Mac will be on on November the 8th and the next podcast episode episode 8 will be on the 8th of November that's perfect um, so the colorway of the month is called cozy season and uh, I'll share all the details mood board and all, all pattern and everything uh, in the next episode but I wanted just you, for you guys to have a look at the colorway uh, en avant première <laughs> because it will be on my booth at, 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 at the Fibre Festival so that's Feltin, Les Journées Nationales de la Laine and so I wanted to, you know, for you to, to see it before it's on my, it's at my booth <laughs> at my booth so uh, here it is so cozy season so it's inspired basically by uh, everything cozy at this time of year in a horror hemisphere so that's all lovely candles um, pumpkins plates uh, getting cozy on the sofa watching Netflix with a cup of tea you see that kind of things um, also um, leaves changing colors uh, change of light as well the light is not the same at this time of year well all those things so here it is it's not really inspired by one thing in particular it's just more a mix of those things like you know sitting by the fireplace with a good book right? a cup of coffee that kind of things so I'm going to show you the colorway on, on the different bases so it's basically it starts as as a beige um, and then I'm adding some colors like you have gray, different shades of brown, you have burgundy, you have burnt orange and a load of speckles in all those colors plus a bit of green, just a bit of evergreen. So here it is on tweed, beautiful tweed. Um, this is on BFL, well it's not my usual BFL because my usual BFL is out of stock at my suppliers so I have a supplier that I love and I mean their bases are crazy good it's the base that you get in the shop usually and I know you guys love them as well uh, but they are having really a, a difficult times right now they have a shortage on a lot of bases Fortunately, it's not every basis at the same time, but there is always, you know, some stock issues on, on one or several bases. So this time around it's BFL, so ha I had to lean on my other supplier to get another BFL base in the shop. It's absolutely gorgeous. It just has not that same woolly touch my other base has, but otherwise on paper it's exactly the same. I will not even have to change the labels. So it's the same yardage for the same gram, um, for the same weight, it's the same composition, same ply structure, same everything. The only thing is that it feels just a little more dry on the touch on the hand. It has less of this woolly feeling and less halo, but still it's a beautiful, beautiful yarn. 100% blue faced lace and it takes the dye beautifully. This is an extra thin fingering and I really love that dark, that, that, that warm grey tones with burnt orange and burgundy, it's beautiful. Um, I'm going to share with you in the next episode the, the pattern that I'm going to uh, suggest for this month of the Sock Knitters Almanac 
for once it's going the first time it's going to be one of my own <laughs> so uh, that was not previously available in English so that will be a first for you guys um, the pattern is called grimoire and I still have to work on the English translation but it will should be done by the time I'm updating the shop with this so this is an MCN and it's I think it's my favorite I might just you know uh, choose this one for this month pattern I still have to knit the sample though <laughs> Uh, this is on Nurex. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I wanted something to scream cozy at you. So I think, yeah. And I particularly love Stellina this month. I think it serves the colorway very well. It gives just a bit of light, like, you know, like a candle flame or a... a, a um, a hearth, a fire in a hearth would, would do. Um, I think it's really beautiful on Stellina. I don't, uh, yes, you can see how it shimmers, it's beautiful. Uh, so that's it for this month's colorway. Well, this month, next month's colorway. It's pretty early in the month for you to, to for me to unveil the colorway of, of November. So it will be in the shop on November 8th. Um, next topic I wanted to touch base on Stephen West's wonderful mystery cow. He doesn't disappoint, does he? No, he doesn't. I mean, I'm in love with it. It's beautiful. So if you don't want to be spoiled, just look away. Uh, here it is. Here it comes. <laughs> So I'm sorry I'm in middle in I'm in the middle of a row. So last week you saw it up until the noodles here. <laughs> we have some noodles in France called coquillette. So that's exactly what it is. That's like it's very small macaroni coquillette. So this is like coquillette. <laughs> and uh, here are the how how crazy is that how crazy crazy good is that. Also. I don't know about you, but the wrong side of this looks like this. And I made, I was extra careful to have a lot of give uh, on the wrong side, you know, in the floats, because I know that I usually block my shawls quite aggressively and I wanted, I didn't want it to pack her. So um, yeah, I mean, it's absolutely ugly when you look at, look at it when it's not blocked, but I think I will be happy to you know when it's not like it's like this but once you stretch it you see that you you actually need the give for it to really blow out nicely i have not watched this part of his video but i'm i think he must he must uh touch on that um i watched up until that and i i don't know why this time around i really don't want to be spoiled I managed to get myself spoiled on Clue 2 because I, I mean I was on Instagram and uh, even though people are quite um, you know they, pay, they, they are extra careful not to put uh, spoiler, ima spoiler images uh, as first image of their carousel still when you go on Instagram regularly you usually see the second picture third picture if you have seen the first one already and so I managed to get spoiled mm, I was so not happy about that um and I, I will get spoiled again because i mean i will have to spend more time in the coming week in the coming days and in the coming week uh, to prepare the the fiber festival so i won't have as much time as i had over the past few days to um knit on that so it's i mean it's i, I there's no avoiding it i am going to get spoiled um then I wanted to talk to you about uh, just a tiny bit about, uh, you know, this Fiber Festival that's coming up. I don't know why, but I'm so excited about this one. I mean, it's not obviously my first Fiber Festival. I am not like, I am not like a veteran of Fiber Festivals. I mean, I've, I've done some. Uh, recently, I've done more. But because, I mean, uh, COVID crisis uh, is um, relenting just a bit. Uh, so 
enough for us to resume fiber festivals in France. Um, but I'm really excited for this one. It has to me very strong vibes of things. It, it reminisces me of, of Rhinebeck actually, because five years ago I was lucky enough to, lucky enough to jump on a plane with friends and go to Rhinebeck. And it was such a awesome experience. It was wonderful. We, we were able to spend a few days in New York City as well. And I so enjoyed myself and I was, I mean, for months I was so excited about this trip and uh, I really had a great, great time. My only wish is to be able to go back there with my family, actually, ju not just my friends, but my, my whole family. And we almost booked tickets, actually, because we have some family in Canada as well. And we were thinking with my husband, we might as well do a round trip and fly to see uh, my husband's family in Canada and then uh, drive from Montreal to New York, <laughs> like road trip fashion. Uh, spend a few days in New York with the kids and then drive back to, to Montreal and fly back home from there. So we were almost, we almost booked the tickets and then thought better of it because, uh, as you know, kids can't be vaccinated yet. And it's pretty drastic when you have a kid that is suddenly sneezing or has a running nose or things like that or just coughing a bit. And... I mean, I'm not having my kids tested every 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 week. Uh, obviously, we are fully vaccinated. All those who can be vaccinated are vaccinated in the family. So that's three out of six. And uh, what the doctors told us is that if the kids, the smaller kids, are sick, uh, like with a, a common cold or something, or something that looks like a common cold. We don't have to get them tested um, unless we uh, vaccinated people develop some symptoms evocative of COVID or something like that. So, uh, I mean, it seems pretty, you know, laid back. We are not uh, getting crazy over a running nose, over uh, just a bit of coughing or anything like that. Uh, I mean, yeah. It's not an issue, really. We do not, we do not fret about that. But looking at all the uh, things you need to uh, make sure of uh, when flying abroad and to Canada, I mean, I was like, there's no way, I, I can't be sure that uh, on the day of the of of the travel, or the day before, or two days before, or even a week before. Uh, baby Amelia is not going to have a running nose, Constant is not going to start coughing or uh, just sneezing or uh, wh what about now? <laughs> because I mean there is nothing that enables you to cancel your flights and for those reasons you have to pay. So yeah, I mean too many things we couldn't control so yeah we decided just to postpone maybe by, by a year but definitely I hope <laughs> We are really, really planning to do that. So, I mean, if we can, it's going to be amazing. Well, that is a very, very long uh, way of telling you that I'm very excited about this coming show because it reminds me a lot of Rheinbeck and uh, because there is this very close to the, um, you know, production of wool in France, which is uh, something that is really not very active. So... Uh, we are going to the heart of the uh, wool country, actually, in France. Uh, it's an area where you have some historic spinning mill, uh, one historic spinning mill, and the whole town of, of Feltin, where, it, where it's held, it's going to be uh, festive. There is going to be open doors in a lot of um, institution related to fiber, the fiber industry, uh, not only knitting, but also a, a lot of different uses for, for wool-like felting and things like that. So it's really like, for me like I'm going to go into uh, something encompassing a lot of 
things relating to wool, to wool, like from production with different outlets, different outcomes, a lot of colleagues, a lot of professional, uh, a, lot of, a lot of shop owners uh, that I know from only online and uh, that I'm eager to meet in real life. Uh, I mean, it's going to be awesome. I, I really can't wait. And the quality of the, of the workshops and uh, all the festive things going on all around the thing i mean we received an email from the organizers uh, really, uh, last week and they were telling us that the whole town is preparing for this event and it's i mean it's going to be amazing i can't wait i'm really really happy about that so i'm really proud also to be you know part of this and um such a joy such a joy so yeah <laughs> and I'm, I'm taking my family with me as well we rented an airbnb uh, like uh, there is not much accommodation around because it's really some a really rural part of france uh, but I rented a big B airbnb um, because uh, I mean there is a lot of us <laughs> and um, yeah it's a beautiful property um, we're going to, uh, you know, celebrate Halloween there. So I don't know if there will be much neighbors, m m m kids in the streets or things like that. But uh, uh, we will have, a, you know, just a bit of um, of candy stash and uh, we will do something because the kids love Halloween uh, with all the candies and all. Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to that. I'm going to debrief you uh, in details and uh, yeah, it's going to be great. <laughs> So the next item I wanted to show you is very small, but I had a comment on my previous episode telling me, well, it's great what you did about, you know, all work, no play uh, gnomes. I love your kids, but are you knitting one? Actually, I am. <laughs> I started my no when uh, like a few days ago, but uh, it's very slow. I'm making very slow progress because I have a lot of things to knit. Well obviously because shallography okay let's be honest for a minute so i cast on there is intention there okay uh i'm i need to knit the welt ideally i'd like to i'd like to have no one with me uh, for the fiber festival but i don't know if i will manage because most important is to knit a sock out of those <laughs> one sock so I think that's going to be my uh, main project for the weekend but I can definitely whip up a sock in a weekend um, it's possible I can definitely whip up a sock in time for the festival I can do that but I don't know if I can do anything else <laughs> so um, Last thing I wanted to tell you, I wanted to thank you so much because uh, the last shop update for Manuela Chunky Cardigan was a huge, a roaring success. I mean, the, the, the kids in the colorways shimmer, so that this one and the other one I showed you, the which is called Nuage, it's light gray with pickles. Uh, were sold out in a matter of hours so I'm going to dye more so I will have some at my booth at Felta and I'm going to dye more for the shop in November so the shop is really going to um, get back to its usual rhythm of um, weekly updates uh, starting mid-November once uh, you know um, the fiber festivals are done and um, the advent calendars I've been shipped because that's the next big item on my to-do list it's to finish all the advent calendars and then I'll be free as a bird <laughs> okay guys so thank you I wish you a lovely week don't forget no podcast episode next week but there will be a surprise shop update on the 1st of November. So if you are not a newsletter subscriber yet, I strongly encourage you to subscribe. I will give uh, the details of this surprise shop update is in the newsletter. Um, it's going to be a surprise. But if you were around for the previous surprise, then you might have a hint about what this update, shop update is going to be about, okay? Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> so see you uh, on on November 8th and um, yeah I will tell you all about this surprise uh, in the November 1st newsletter bye guys <laughs> <laughs>